blighted robs me of me rest. Love, hopeless love, my ardent soul encumbers. Love, nightmare-like, lies heavy on me chest. And weaves itself into my midnight slum. When you're lying awake with a dismal headache in repose tempered by anxiety, I conceive you may use any language you choose to indulge in without impropriety. For your brain is on fire, the bedclothes conspire of usual slumber to plunder you. First your counterpane goes and uncovers your toes and your sheet slips demurely from under you. Then the blanket being tickles, you feel like mixed pickles, so terribly sharp is the pricking. And you're hot and you cross and you tumble and toss till there's nothing twixt you and the ticking. Then the bedclothes all creep to the ground in a heap and you pick them all up in a tangle. Next your pillow resigns and politely declines to remain at its usual angle. Well, you get some repose in the form of a dose of hot eyeballs and head ever aching. But your slumbering teams are such horrible dreams that you'd very much better be waking. For you dream you are crossing the channel and tossing about in a steamer from Harwich, which is something between a large bathing machine and a very small second-class carriage. And you're giving a treat, penny ice and cold meat to a party of friends and relations. They're a ravenous horde and they all came on board of Square and South Kensington stations. And bound on that journey you find your attorney who started that morning from Devon. He's a bit undersized, and you don't get surprised when he tells you he's only 11. Well, you're driving like mad with a singular lad by the by the ship's now a four wheeler. And you're playing round games, and he calls you bad names, and you tell him the ties pay the dealer. But this you can't stand, so you throw up your hand, and you find her as cold as an icicle. In your shirt and your socks, a black silk with gold gloves, cross himself where he playing on a bicycle. And he and the crew are on bicycle too, which they somehow or other invested in. And he's telling the Tars all the particulars of a company he's interested in. It's a scheme of devices to get low prices all goods from cloth mixers to cables, which tickle the sailors by treating retailers as though they were all vegetables. You get a good spade and you plant a small trade, and first take off his boots with a boot tree. Then his legs will take root, and his fingers will shoot, and they'll blossom and bud like a fruit tree. In the graceful tree, you get grapes and green pea, cauliflower, pineapples, and cranberries. While the pastry cook plant, cherry, brandy, will grant apple puffs and three quarters and banberries. The shares of a penny and ever so many are taken by the Rothschild of Bering. And just as a few were allotted to you, you awake with a shudder despairing. <laughs> You're a regular wreck with a creak in your neck, and no wonder you stomp your heads on the floor and your needles and pins and your soles and your shins and your flesh is a creep with your left place to sleep and a crap in your toes to fly and your nose is a fluff and your long and a fever is tongue and a thirst is intense. The general says that you haven't been sleeping in clover. <laughs> but the tongue is 